My name is Professor Cullum O'Moran. I'm a consultant gastroenterologist and Emeritus Professor of Medicine at Trinity College Dublin. I'm also a founder member of the European Board of Gastroenterology, the outgoing president of the United European Gastroenterology, and I'm on the governing board for the Biomedical Alliance for Health Research. Without appropriate diagnostic tests, the similar symptom profiles of lower gastrointestinal disorders can make differentiation difficult. With just a handful of diagnostic tests, one faecal sample, faecal calprotectin, and four blood tests, tissue transglutaminase, full blood count, C-reactive protein, and thyroid stimulating hormone, differentiation becomes much simpler. Calprotectin is a protein found in white blood cells which accumulates at the site of inflammation in the gastrointestinal tract. Fecal calprotectin is a specific marker of bowel inflammation that is elevated when the bowel is inflamed and is traceable in stool samples for almost a week when samples are kept at room temperature. Furthermore, endoscopy is the gold standard for confirming the diagnosis of celiac disease and inflammatory bowel disease. But some healthcare professionals, as a precautionary measure, have a tendency to refer patients that most likely have irritable bowel syndrome for a potentially avoidable endoscopy. This panel of tests can be used to help HCPs determine the need for endoscopy. My colleague, Dr. Ramesh Aras Aradman, talks about the clinical pathway in detail. However, in brief, it is as follows. When a patient under 45 years of age reports symptoms of altered bowel habit for more than one month with no red flag symptoms, you should request diagnostic tests to exclude celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, or irritable bowel syndrome. The diagnostic tests should include a full blood count to identify patients with anemia, C-reactive protein, a nonspecific test for inflammation, thyroid-stimulating hormone to identify patients with hypothyroidism, tissue transglutaminase to identify patients with celiac disease, and fecal calprotectin to specifically identify patients who may have inflammatory bowel disease. Please remember, for tissue transglutaminase, your patient must be eating some gluten in their diet every day for six weeks before testing. One example of a case where this panel of tests helped to prevent avoidable endoscopies is a 28-year-old female with recurrent GI symptoms. She had subfertility and as a result was strongly suspected of having celiac disease. A panel of tests was requested, all of which came back negative. A positive diagnosis of IBS was made. She was educated to modify her diet, prescribed her mebeverine for her stomach cramps, and a small dose of amitriptyline. The symptoms then resolved over the next few months. A second case where this panel of tests helped to identify a real need for endoscopy is a 20-year-old female who was referred to me from her family practitioner who noticed the patient had persistent IBS-like symptoms. He requested the recommended panel of tests, of which the tissue transglutaminase was positive. I performed an endoscopy, diagnosed her with celiac disease, and referred her to a dietitian to implement a gluten-free diet. Her symptoms resolved. The tissue transglutaminase levels were monitored to ensure compliance and response to diet. This case nicely illustrates the need to perform these tests on all patients presenting with symptoms indicative of celiac disease, IBD, and IBS. Especially considering 36% of celiac disease patients are incorrectly diagnosed with IBS. A third case where this panel of tests helped to prevent an incorrect diagnosis is a 44-year-old male smoker with recurrent GI symptoms, suspected of having IBS. I requested the recommended panel of tests and the patient came back with a positive faecal calprotectin. I performed a colonoscopy and diagnosed him with Crohn's disease of the terminal ileum and prescribed budesonide. 
I also referred him to a dietitian and to a smoking cessation scheme. After six months, his faecal calprotectin test results returned to normal, which confirmed remission. This case emphasizes the need to perform these tests on all patients presenting with symptoms indicative of celiac disease, IBD and IBS, especially considering that 35% of IBD patients are incorrectly diagnosed with IBS. To summarize, a small panel of diagnostic tests within the primary care setting can provide rapid answers that can help guide clinical decisions, reduce avoidable endoscopies, and get the patient a much needed diagnosis sooner. And ensure, as a conscientious practitioner, you're taking the best course of action for your patients, helping to improve their quality of life.